part of the Rick Eruption. I'm Dan Cheris. And if I look like Nick Lachey on the cover of 98 Degrees because of You's album, I don't know what to say. I <laughs> find the Rick Eruption. <laughs> I lost my thought. I couldn't agree more with you there. The hashtag for today's episode, if you wanted to, to join the debate at home, Turtleneck Tuesday, self-explanatory. Come on, look at these things. We were going to go ugly sweater. Couldn't find it, Eddie. Saw these things, said these are hideous. Let's go. I'm scared to get a little one of these going. So, yeah, get a little... Bring this right up to the ears is where you want to be you, with this. Your neck, your neck is a little tight. You Mine, mine's a little right more there. loose. Oh yeah. We got we got the, uh, the the big neck guys. Some linebacker used to wear this. Ten sports topics. Let's do it. All right. Topic number one. So as we know, last night Pats Texans Monday Night Football. One of the bigger, one of the billed as one of the better Monday Night Football games all season. Yeah. Pats obviously blow up the Texans. What are your thoughts from that game? It was just so weird. It was not like a game at all. No. Like, it, no. it was 7 nothing before you know it. Yep. And then it was 14 nothing, 21 nothing. The rest of the first half sort of is just nothing going on. Three and outs everywhere. Yep. Second half, the Pats dominated again. It was just, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, just the Pats are just killing it right now. Just killing it. Best team in the AFC? Yes. I want them to get that home field advantage. Yep. I mean, two more games Houston has with the Colts. I think the Pats are going to win yeah. out. I know I said last week that they're going to lose. But win out, get and the they, one And seed. they play the Vikings. Two against the Colts and the Vikings in there. So and the Vikings will be hungry. I think they suck. And they'll run the rock. I think they're going to be awful. But well, they'll run the football. They'll be fine. So they got some tough games left. I think the yeah. Pats, they got the Jaguars week 16. Yeah. They got week 17 against the Dolphins. Those are two gimmies, two bunnies. Yep, two bunnies. And then, yeah, so week 15 against the Niners. I think the Pats, number one yeah. seed in the AFC East. Or in the AFC, excuse me. That means you got to get to the Super Bowl. Yeah, it looks like as we get farther and farther in the season, it looks like it's just going to be classic Manning versus Brady Belichick again, which will be excellent, as we all know, in those playoff games. Probably, hopefully, we'll see them in that in an, another AFC Championship it's, game. It's a storyline like 10 years ago. It's yeah. crazy. And it's it's unbelievable, the consistency of those two guys and how they just elevate their teams. To I mean, you have to give Manning credit. Uh, maybe you thought it was a system thing in Indianapolis. He goes to Denver, and he's done the exact same thing. Can't give him enough credit. But I, I can't believe... How how bad we whipped them Texans well, and and how the same kind of whipping they Green Bay they, gave them. they quit they quit to the Texans quit in that game when they were down at twenty eight seven absolute quit job by Houston there second off second off second point when did Dante Stallworth join this team and is he going to be a vertical Last threat week. all season I love no, that no he's not going to be a vertical threat I, you know, he looked like he still had some wheels I'm going deep with him whenever I can now I like that I like that matchup Enjoy. bring some verticality in your you game because. The, t- the two guys you have now, Welker Hernandez working underneath. Welker couldn't catch anything last night. A couple bad passes from Brady on some of those plays. A couple drops there from Welker. Hernandez looks solid as now usual. Two fumbles. Running game was excellent. Two fumbles. J.J. Watt, not a huge factor. No, no, no was, not a was factor at all. Pressure was around the quarterback. No sack, no slots. So. Two red zone fumbles for New England. I mean, yeah. that could have turned the game. Ridley's ball security is awful. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's awful. Uh, he was I mean, and that was, a, that was a, a, a pretty good strip. Kind of a fluke thing. It's not like oh, he was getting like, mauled. Three guys on the guy. They were just tearing the guy. Yeah, apart. he's got to be but smart. But two there. red zone fumbles. I mean, yeah. that could have gone either way, and it would have been, yeah. it would have been a ball game. I don't know about that. two red yeah, zone fumbles. That early, the early fumble, the second one. Regardless, if we would have lost that or not, yeah, we would have won the football yeah, game. Okay. The first one, if we would have lost that, for sure they would have been there. That all right, all right. Talib, give him credit for even though he hurt his hip, was fantastic on Andre Johnson, and then when Dedern kicked over on him, looked pretty good. Jumped a few routes. Secondary. I'm gonna say it. Not an issue anymore. If Talib is healthy, okay. if he gets hurt, then we're then we're back into a situation I don't want to be. With Talib though, secondary looks so good. So Pat's got to get to the Super Bowl now. That's that's my AFC prediction. Championship game for me is where I see them. I still think Houston could get them. Yeah, you always gotta watch out for those, I think they those get games. Them. Especially the Rock, Pal the Rock, and Denver. It's not it's not an open. This is one game. Remember, we killed we killed the Jets on Monday Night Football a few yeah, years ago. Yeah. Lost in the oh, yeah. lost that first round. There's second round of the playoffs, but. All right, Milka, what do we got? Next topic. So a lot of teams in the NFL, they're up in the ante at this time of the season. Which team stock are you buying? I'm going to go. We got the graphic up there. I'm going with Washington. Even with the IG3 in, uh, injury, I think what they're going to do is they can limit their playbook a little bit, get Kirk Cousins going in that offense, stretch running attack. Alfred Morris, great running back, great rookie season, over 1,000 yards. Physical runner. He's not going to bust any 60-yard runs on you, but he's going to pick up four. He's going to pick up five. He's going to pick up eight. That's what he does. So he'll get the zone running game going. After they pound you, put it in his put it in his pocket, pull it out, pass it over the top with Kirk Cousins. I like what Washington can, Washington can still do, 
even without RG3. Obviously, would I like them to have RG3? Yes, because that just brings another dynamic uh, uh, like area of their offense there. But they'll be able to work with Cousins. And you know, let's be honest, Dallas choked artists. They play them the oh. last. They play them week 17. More than likely, Washington's going to win that game at home. So I'm taking Washington rising into the playoffs. Eight now, seed now, probably. Now mine might not be as bold as yours, but I'm taking a team called the Green Bay Packers. They have four losses on the season. Okay. Okay. No, no, no. Four no, no, losses. No, okay, they were okay. two and four at one point. I mean, everyone's buying Green Bay stock. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's like buying. I'm gonna, I'm gonna that's like buying why. like Nike stock or something. All right, like I'm going to explain why I'm. I'm investing. I'm, in a, I'm afraid of Green Bay. I'm right investing now. in a startup company. I'm. I'm. A, I'm afraid of Green Bay. Yes, right now. Their I am too. Defense is always suspect. Their running game is always pretty. They're terrible. non-existent. Yeah. So it's pretty much Aaron Rodgers. And I'm pretty sure receivers. I could start at running back for Green Bay. Well, I, I was with Ryan Eaton last night. He says he could have ran the same route as uh, Brandon Lloyd's touchdown. I was like, buddy. Yeah, not that fast. This guy's jogging. He would, he would probably be in a race running backwards. Anyways, side story. Green Bay. I like what they're doing yeah. right now. You gotta be. You gotta watch out for Green Bay. Yes. They ha- they were on the ropes last uh, two nights ago against D- the Detroit Lions. I got a Detroit. Yeah. I pretty much could wear this to a Lions yeah, game and be accepted. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I like Green Bay. Yeah. I think they're gonna. They're probably not gonna get the one seed in the NFC. No. You might get the two. They'll be th- th- they're, they're, gonna be, tough they're, they're gonna they're get the out. two, I think, because I think they're gonna win out. Pats are gonna beat the Niners next week. Niners, you can't be buying that team. You can't be buying them right now. I'm just gonna say, I'm, I like where Green Bay is. There yeah. was always a team that sort of is not good at the beginning of the season, sort of stumbles, comes back. It's pretty much. The is New there Giants any team? Year. Is there any team in the league though that's more predicated on one guy? Literally, the Packers will go as far as Aaron Rodgers takes them. Defense, as you said, terrible. Running yeah. game, as you said, worse than terrible. All about throwing the football. All about Aaron Rodgers. He is their running game. Escaping the yeah. pocket. Picking up big runs on quarterback channel. That's all they have running the football. This team is so Aaron Rodgers-centric. They'll, they'll make the playoffs. They'll be a high seed in the playoffs. But I, I wouldn't be shocked if they made the Super Bowl. Wouldn't be shocked if they lost in the first round of the playoffs. You know what's also awful is the Jets are game back in the playoffs. Yeah, that, I don't even know how that is possible. Six and seven. I mean, that's just terrible. All right. Next topic. So we went... Topic two was what team stock are you buying? Topic three, who are you selling? There's some teams that are stumbling right now. Yes. And the team stock that I am bu- I'm selling is the Baltimore Ravens. Okay. They come they come out, they have a big night game. We saw what they did with New England. They won the game. Pats probably should have won. Lose to Charlie Batch. Yeah. Charlie Batch. Yeah. It was thirteen to three at halftime. They had three points at halftime and they can't get it done. Yeah. Then you got another big game coming up against a team that's feeling pretty confident down the beltway, the Washington Redskins, and you can't get it done there either. You lose to the backup quarterback, and that's on a two-point conversion. And this guy just led the game-winning drive. Baltimore Ravens right now, they're playing Denver this week. That, I think, is going to be a loss. Yeah. So they're looking at the four seed. They're lucky that yeah. Pittsburgh lost but that's a, 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 an absolute awful game against the Chargers. You don't want Baltimore in the playoffs, though. You see, you don't want it. I don't care how bad they're playing going into the playoffs. I don't want them in the playoffs. Yeah, don't but, want them. Yeah, but, but, Tough. But they were they were in line for the one seed. Yeah. Now they're... Yeah. They're awful if on the, the road. AFC was any good, they should lose the division. They're awful on the road, and Flacco's awful on the road specifically. That's where they struggle. Road woes. Yeah. Uh, I'm selling a team... They're out of the playoff picture, but I'm selling a team as a franchise. Detroit. Don't like the way that team's going right now. Their best player, talent-wise, is Indomitian Sue. He's an idiot, and now people are coming out, even on his team, and saying this guy's an idiot. And that's not good when the key— with the, Who was that? The quarterback, it was an unnamed source on the uh, Detroit Lions saying he doesn't know how to win. He doesn't know what it's all about. The classic all stuff, unnamed which source. Which is true. He doesn't know how to win. I mean, they had one good season last year. Stafford, his mechanics are so bad. He's so lazy with his throwing motion. He was my motion. preseason MVP. Yeah, mine was Jake Cutler. I so felt very us, confident with that. Neither of us are even close to those uh, on that. But well, yours is still better. His mechanics. I mean, I mean, Cutler did throw a couple pick sixes yeah. in recent yeah, weeks. Yeah, you're going to get that with Cutler. That's what he does. But eh. Stafford regressing a little bit. Sue is an idiot, kind of regressing. The team lacking direction this year. Should have They could have. They could have won a few of these tight games. They oh, were definitely, in. definitely. Mistakes. They could have been a close to a fringe playoff team this year. I'm going to sell Detroit as a franchise. I think last year we thought 8-8, eight and eight, young core. They're going to be really yeah. good in the future. I'm saying I think that was a little bit of a flash in the pan. They're going the other direction there. It's tough. It's Sorry, tough. Detroit. It's tough living in Detroit in general. Next yeah. topic. 
So we got a good battle heating up for NFL Comeback Player of the Year. Adrian Peterson, knee injury. Yep. We got Peyton Manning, neck injury. My brother actually yesterday, he wants Jamal Charles in the mix. I said probably not because yeah, Peterson is a better running back from the same injury, and it happened later in the season. But he'll be in the conversation. So who wins NFL Comeback Player of the Year? I like the guy that we got on our screen right yeah. now. I mean, Jamal Charles in my fantasy team. He's good season. He's, he's, good he's season. decent. He's decent. Coming off a knee injury. Good the season. team is just too too terrible. Yeah. Just awful. Well, it's an individual. So I like though. Adrian Peterson right now because his yeah. team is in the playoff mix, and it's more because of him than your quarterback. Yeah. Your quarterback throws for like 100 yards yeah. a week. Christian Ponder is awful, though he's getting married to Sam Steele, whose birthday who's is Sam today. Steel, Happy birthday, ESPN, Sam Steele. Uh, who's Sam Steele? Uh, the sideline reporter for ESPN. Filled in, stepped into yeah. Aaron Andrews' shoes. Yeah. Okay. Guy's lucky as hell. Sorry, sorry. I don't watch ESPN anymore. I. Yeah. I don't like ESPN unless the Gonzaga Bulldogs are on right okay. now. Or Monday Night Football is pretty good. Okay. Did you see Gruden last night? Yes, he was. Talking a- before the game yes. about how excited he was for the yes. quarterbacks. Can you tell I love these quarterbacks? And it's great because it's the the gap between Tarico yes, and it's always Gruden. like because he's moving around that entire time. You'll yeah. catch an elbow <laughs> if you're Mike Tarico yeah. and Gruden getting excited. You know what I missed last night is remember two years ago against the Jets, Tarico had that just plain like gray <laughs> and like this color hat. Yep. It was that oh, color yeah. right there. Just just the hat Here's in the a- cold weather. Buddy, Mike Tirico put on a winter hat, not this regular old baseball yeah, cap that had nothing on it. Anyways, at, anyways, you got AP. I'm uh, going AP Peterson. Year. He's he's solid every week. I drafted Toby Gearhart this year in like the eighth round. I was like, Peterson's getting hurt. Yeah. I'm throwing Gearhart in there. I love how he doesn't wear gloves. Turns out Gearhart blows. Turns out Peterson's dirty. Yeah, not only has Peterson come back to the level where he was before the knee injury, he's better than that. And he's talking not just 2,000. He's talking about breaking that breaking the single-season rushing record, which probably won't happen. He needs to average 168 yards per. Uh, he'll probably fall short, but he could get to 2K, which would be unbelievably impressive for someone who's hel- who's been healthy for 18 months. This guy just came off a knee injury, carrying this team on his back. Like you said, Ponder, decent quarterback. He's not cool. I mean, yeah, let's yeah, be yeah. honest. I thought maybe he'd have a better year than this, but I, I had average. the Vikings at two wins this year. So. Winning some football games because they're running the right. Their offensive line, they'll beat you up defensively. They play pretty well. Won't make the playoffs, but a pretty solid team building. But Adrian Peterson, I had last, I had him on a di- in a fa- different fantasy league. Absolutely tremendous to have. Just 100 yards consistently. And his lateral movement, and we saw against the Bears, and that's one of the things I always question with those knee injuries, moving laterally. laterally looks unbelievable. He puts that foot in the ground. Zip, zip, yeah. gone. Zip, zip, gone. Now, the oh, yeah. opposite of Love the NFL's AP. comeback player of the year would be Darren McFadden, who's hurt yeah, every year. Oh, my God. My buddy drafted him eighth overall in fantasy. You're an idiot. The guy's going to get hurt in week five. Nice pick, idiot. That was Jada Mello. <laughs> Next topic. So All right. Yeah. yeah go uh, ahead. Well, well, I'll take this one. We okay. saw a couple great one-handers this weekend. I actually saw Jermaine Gresham over the middle grab a nice one-hander. Wasn't as great as two... One was Chris Durham, Sunday Night Football, catch on, uh, in the red zone with one hand down the sideline. We also saw Jason Avant snag a first down. So I didn't see that live, but it was pretty good. I didn't see either of these live. I saw the highlights of both of them. Which one was better? I love the Chris Durham catch, yep. but I'm going with Jason Avon here. Yep. One-handed catch, gets one foot down, gets an elbow down, just along the sidelines. Yeah. He was reaching back like I can't even extend. Like I don't even know how to describe it. It was just like complete extension. Yeah. Gets, the, gets the left, gets the right elbow, inbounds. Ball looked like it was going for the sideline to one of those coaches along the sideline or one of those NFL officials or something. Jason Avon, great catch. I'm going Durham. Toasted his man. Bad throw by Stafford, which we've seen a lot this year. Elevates, extends, gets his hand out on it, snags it. Great story. Chris Durham, Matt Stafford, teammates at Georgia. So I like that connection. Fun ball was back. Georgia Bulldogs. Have to respect that connection there. So I'm taking that guy, Journeyman. Hasn't had a great career. Never heard his name before this one-handed catch. Give him a lot of credit. So I'm going Chris Durham over Jason Bonney. Even though the Yvonne catch was unbelievable. The throw by Foles was terrible. Let's, let's be honest. Yeah, Awful he, throw. he's thrown so, some bad balls. Not setting his feet in the pocket. That's what I've seen. Sitting the tootsies? Yeah, sitting the, when I when I watch my Nick Foles tape, not setting his feet in the pocket. All right. Next topic. And to Chris Marlowe, the guy who called Olympic Beach Volleyball, got to set the tootsies. Chris, give Keeping him a Keeping the shout. tootsies warm. Chris Marlowe, Kevin Wong, great, great Oh, team. yeah, excellent. Unbelievable excellent. team. Excellent. Unbelievable. All right, next topic. All right, so we saw big news coming out. Marcus Lattimore, the running back from South Carolina, hurt himself this year. He's going into the NFL draft. Some say he should, some say he shouldn't. What does the warehouse think? I think yes. Two knee, two knee injuries in a row. You're going to move in the NFL, less contact during the week. That's going to preserve you a little bit. 
the game a little quicker, a little more physical. But we've seen guys, huge knee injuries, big knee injuries, Frank Gore, um, Willis McGahee, both huge, crit, massive knee injuries. McGahee Come back. Is a great example. You can get him in the second, third, fourth round. And I said this last night. If Lattimore's available in round three, round four, see you later, Stephen Ridley. I'm taking Marcus Lattimore. He'll be a franchise running back. I guarantee you, two to three years. This guy's an unbelievable workhorse. He's he was a man child the second he stepped on at South Carolina at 18 years old, running through SEC defenses, running through guys like Dante Hightower, running through guys like Brandon now, if you, Spikes. If you heard, uh, tremendous. If you heard Gruden last night, Highsmith. Yes, did never <laughs> call them Hightower. I noticed that awful. Yeah. Anyways. Sorry, Lattimore's, I had to interrupt that Gruden reference. Lattimore's the guy. Go to the NFL. He'll probably go, set, maybe, depending on where people grade him out, depending on where his knee injury is. But he's obviously he's going to be helped out by a guy like Adrian Peterson coming back and having a great yeah. great season. People are going to say, it can be done. And maybe we have to wait a year. Maybe we have to wait eight games for him to come good. But I see him going late second, early third. Pats don't have a second or a third. But I'm saying if we can finagle our way in there, see you later, Ridley. See you later, Shane Vereen. Well, not see you later. I like Vereen. You're, you're very – you will give people the boot. Without, oh yeah, without, Ridley's he, good, but he's not a great running back. Well, you, and we don't he's have probably a top. We don't have much invested 14 in fourteen running backs. Well, you got to think. Eventually, we're gonna have to pick Vereen or Ridley. So, all right, so maybe Vereen gets the door. Yeah, I don't but care about that. Vereen brings a different style of runner than Lattimore. So I maybe you Danny, keep those. I want Danny Wood in the Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But so Even you take the yesterday, you take the you know? between the tackles physical runner Ridley, replace him with Lattimore. Boom. All right. What a running game. All right, L- let me go right here. I like Steven. And I think, I think Marcus Lattimore down is doors. making the right decision going yeah. pro. Look, you only got so many years, those, those yeah. days are going to be kicking. And NFL running backs, those guys are out of the league before you know it. Yep. So, Lattimore is going into the draft. He'll be fine next year. He'll have his pro days. Everyone will he's be nothing to gain by playing another college Oh, team. definitely nothing. nothing. Nothing at all. Uh, so, he's going to go. Heisman. He's going to have a pro day. He's going to do dirty. He's going to have the NFL combine. He's going to go nuts. Everyone's going to be. If he's healthy. Too, everyone's, which he probably he'll, he'll be healthy. He'll be healthy. Um, I don't know what there's no way he's going to be healthy. But he's going to get drafted. Line. I don't know what round, but it doesn't even matter no, what yeah. round. You're an NFL running McGay, back. He got Alfred drafted Moore, and he was out for a year. Alfred Morris is like a sixth round pick yep. and he's tearing it up this year. Yep. Vic Ballard, what round was that guy drafted in? Like the third Six. or something? Six. I'm mixing up my rounds by a lot, but whatever. So he can be an impact player in the NFL another, next year. Another Florida Atlantic player having a good pretty It's not like they're going to ask him to be. Less star gene. Okay. Drop it's not the like they're going to have. But Lod- Florida Atlantic was awful last year, too. It's not going to. Lattimore is like. He's not going to be, like, a number one running back next year. No, he's but eventually he'll be – I think he'll be a great running back in the NFL. He reminds me sort of of LeGarrette Blunt. Except know. smarter and a little more physical. Okay. Better finisher. Yeah, shout out to Nate Bissell because he has a Marcus Lattimore at South Carolina. Oh, yeah. Bought it after he got hurt, so which is hilarious. Next topic. From Hong Kong. All right, so you saw the fight this weekend. Pacquiao Marquez, number four. We got rumors of a rematch. Pacquiao Marquez, five. Do you want to see it happen? Absolutely not. This is what boxing has come to. Five-time rematches. Look, the first three were close. Okay, so you have a fourth. Guy gets knocked out. Done. Series over. The guy proved he's better. We were close. I lost those fights. I knocked you out. I think Marquez right now can go out and say, I'm better than Pacquiao. I don't have to fight him again. I knocked him out. I embarrassed him, too. Didn't just knock him out. Knocked him out. Jinky was Jinky was trying to get in the ring. Knocked him out. You know who Jinky is? No. That's Manny Pacquiao's no. brother. Knocked him. Knocked him. Wrecked him. Nearly killed him. That's what I'm saying. So he just said wrecked him. So, Marquez, Marquez. I think I don't want to see. A, I don't want to really see any boxing match at this point. The sport no. is on life support. Yeah, it, it really is beyond life support. All right, all right. I want to see a Pacquiao Marquez rematch. Okay. These guys are brought it every time. You want to see and what you want? Right hand. What? Yeah. What you want as a boxing fan? I mean, you pay 60 bucks to see it, so I actually haven't seen it yet. The fact that they still charge $60 for those things is probably the reason why their sport is Oh, big. definitely, definitely. we got to get back to network let's pay. Let's pay Pacquiao and Mayweather $50 million to fight each other. Where's that money coming from? Yeah, the, plus... Let's have 45 before, different, bu- that's different before, belts. Yeah, yeah. The, belt, the belt situation is stupid. NBC Sports had a fight on Saturday night going against this for the NABC, the North American Boxing Commission. It's yeah. like, all right, we're making up titles for these stupid fights right yeah. now. Yeah, so Pacquiao thinks he might go retire. That's obviously bullcrap. Every boxer says they're going to retire. We just saw last year uh, the pride of Providence, Peter Manfredo, says he's retiring after he lost to Julio Cesar Chavez. He was back fighting at Twin River last week. Yeah, so okay. Pacquiao is not going to retire. I want to see a rematch, though, because what I like about boxing, I want to see knockdowns. I want to see knockouts. That's what these guys deliver. There's so much money on the table again for these yeah. guys. 
they're gonna have another 24-7, they're gonna have another pay-per-view, they're gonna have a, a whole bunch, whole world more millions of dollars. Why not have a rematch? Yeah. Uh, well, because one guy got knocked out viciously, so. Well, they, they both got knocked four, out. They fought four times. Yeah, that was the fourth time, and they were all. They fought four times. Yeah, but there's a lot of money out here. Four times. Sorry. You can pretty much kiss any it. thought of Mayweather Pacquiao. Just yeah, oh yeah, that's gone. No relevance anymore either. Next topic. So, so we're going to break. Okay. Rick Poops. Yeah. Been balling. Men seven and two. Women six and two. Men are. I think they were in, in the top twenty-five. I think they were twenty-four still after losing back-to-back games. Very surprising. WPI and UConn. Same here. I thought they would definitely drop out, but that W that yeah. MIT win, especially because MIT. They're the they're like twenty six right now, so I don't know how that's keeping them in the polls, but whatever. Uh, we're going to break now. Everyone's going to be dispersed, but the basketball team they're going to be here playing games. What's the best game, but either men or women, that's going to happen over this winter you break? You know, the women's team is so interesting. I don't know who in, in the LEC in general lost a lot of faces, so I don't know where to look there. The so LEC I'm is the men's side. This year. Yep. I'm going Rhode Island College versus Queen State, January twelfth, yeah. one o'clock here at the Murray Center. Yeah. If wow. you saw. Two years ago, one of the, the gr- probably the greatest game I've ever seen in my life. Double overtime, Keene State lost to Rhode Island College. Plus, you definitely want to be there to see Keene State's coach. I don't know who his name is. Yeah. I don't know what his name is, but he deserves to be thrown out of every game because he should get two technicals every game. Yes. He's that much of, a, of an animated guy on the sidelines. And then last year, Rick gave up 11 points in the final minute yeah. at Keene wow, to a lose game. by what one. What a game that was. Keene came back. Rick handled the business. But that's going to be a good game all the way around. Keene State... Just missed out on an NCAA tournament berth last year. Rick obviously made it. It's going to be a good game. Yeah, no, that that is going to be excellent. That might be one of the better games of the season. It's always great when those two teams match up. Uh, I'm going to go You went men's. I'll go women. I'll go Sunday. Women traveling down to your. I, I think it's interesting. Uh, Division one game in the middle of the season is... Doesn't make any yeah, sense at all. Yeah, it makes absolutely zero sense. But you have to look at it from the aspect. Marcus Riley's going to be on the bench for the Rams. A few anchor women. Should obviously. I wear this? Should I wear this yeah, or should well, I put my support my anchor woman? Uh, what does, uh, well, you're I'm going to support the anchor yeah, woman. Come, come on, on, I'm just kidding. We're going to support Marcus Riley as well. Guys, great guy, great individual. Got to give a shout out to Marcus Riley. Nice guy. Did what he had to do, moved up, opportunity. I think we'd all do the same. So no hate there, just love, and that'll be interesting to see them play that game. It'll be an emotional game. Will the anchor woman be able to stay competitive throughout the game? Is a question that I have. But come the end of the year. Playing these D1 teams going to help you out, especially with a few freshmen in your starting lineup. I think it's going to be a real interesting game down at the Ryan Center. Oh, yeah, the Ryan Center. Let's do it. Let's do. All right, Melka, can we get our next topic? Here we go. Now we're down the stretch. Stretch run. Stretch run, yeah. we got. This is going to be our last episode. Sorry, folks, for the semester. It's been one semester up, another another one up, on deck. Up and down. I mean, we got one more left. This is like our second Christmas semester. is coming along. I mean, some people don't celebrate Christmas, but we do. Hanukkah. You, you could celebrate. We're in the middle could, of Hanukkah right now. I could right celebrate now. Hanukkah. I don't. We could. We could. We could. But what do you want for Christmas warehouse? What are you asking your mom to get? Come on. Uh, is it, is it going to be mom? Yeah. Mom does a Christmas let's, shopping? Let's be honest here. We all know me. When I'm on the sidelines, when I'm doing my work, I like to be dressed as high fashion as I can. Shirt, tie, suit, the nine. Maybe I'll wear a nice sweater with a you pole You got to get a pocket square. Oh, I, I have one. I need more. So I'm going just, just high, high fashion in general. A couple suits. Polo, some ties, pocket square, maybe some cufflinks, even though I don't maybe have Maybe some shirts shoes that... to go with it? Or are you going to no, rock the sneakers? Come on. Thing? No, sneaks. Sneaks? Sneaks. Get so out of here. You, that's... Pollock always wears sneaks. David Pollock always wears sneaks. Even Does when he? He's, yeah. So. I, My turn? Just so I can roll on the sidelines and look good. My turn? Yep. Um, Argyle sweaters. You know, what I want for Turtle Christmas. Turtleneck sweaters. What I want for Christmas, I mean, uh, you know, I always wanted a puppy for Christmas. But my parents were like, "This is sad, right here." My, my parents were like, just "You can't even deep. take care of yourself. Why am I going to get you a puppy?" This is deep. I'm um, ten years old. Obviously, I can't take, take take I can't take care of myself. I would like a puppy, but I know that's not going to happen. Okay. But you know what has really been an epidemic in my life right now? What video game does not work for me? Send it in the Xbox 360. Turn it on. Wait two minutes for it to load. The disc will not read. Wipe it off on your shirt. Throw it yeah. back in. Disc will not read. FIFA World Cup 2010 Ew. is not working wow. for me right now. No, it's bad. So a new FIFA World Cup okay. 2010. I just need that game. Anyone hashtag it? Maybe send it. Send it to Dan. I might DM him his address, and then you can mail it to him. At Danny H. Harris. Yeah. Yeah. Let me they'll, get the direct they'll pop back going. up at the end of the show. Get so it. yeah, I mean, if I could get a new FIFA World Cup 2010, I'd probably got to go to. Uh, 
GameStop. Yeah. They'll probably get one. one. I'll probably, probably have to like pay like 10 bucks. Thir- you think 10? Yeah, they're probably. Uh, all right. So, yeah, that would be a nice thing I get for Christmas. I don't really have anything on my Christmas oh, okay. uh, wish list. Okay. But if I got a dog, I'd prefer it to be either a Husky or a Bernese Mountain Dog. Okay. I like how you have that plan. It's not really a plan. It was just thought out. Oh, if anyone, if I could get that dog that walks around campus with the leash in his mouth, oh, that'd yeah. be even aw- that'd be just awesome as well. Grace. Yeah. Grace. Let's get it done here. Last topic before we go and uh, enjoy some Christmas festivities. So, Warehouse. I'll lead this off right now. Oh, yeah. Now. It's holiday season again. Holiday movie time. Everyone's enjoying it. What is your favorite holiday movie? It's all about getting the turbo, man. I love oh, Jingle yeah. All The Way. Love Jingle All The Way. That movie is hilarious. Arnold, hilarious. Sinbad, hilarious. Sinbad. The whole, the whole thing is just hilarious. He ends up in the turbo man suit. No one knows what's going on. Love it. Absolutely love that. He thinks his wife is cheating on him, which, is, you know, as a kid, you're like, what? What is that in this Christmas movie? <laughs> but then you get it. The eggnog that the guy makes that everyone loves. Great movie. Turbo Man. Turbo Man. I love Jingle all the a, way. Zip, uh, Sinbad. And he, he I gets the ball. He fights the guy and gets the ball so he can, like, get the Turbo Man. It's awesome. Sin- Sinbad comes out as the villain during that yes. parade. Sinbad is the the mailman who yep. has the, uh, the, the flip over. Yes, gloves. yes. Those are great. Yes, the, Those the, are great. The, the fingerless glove mitten combos. Yeah. I That's like, what I want for Christmas. I want a pair of those. <laughs> uh, dude, you should get that whole outfit and be Sinbad <laughs> next year for Halloween. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Maybe I'll come back for Halloween PTR yeah. as I'll, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be Schwarzenegger. All right. Um, but Plan on it. I, I like where your head's at, but I'm going the, the holiday classic. It's called um, Don't say Home it. Alone. Oh, okay. Home Alone. Uh, you know, Macaulay Culkin, you gotta love, you gotta love Daniel Stern's yeah. movie. Joe Pesci is a great. The wet Bandits. The, the, then the Sticky Bandits yep. in, in the Home yep. Alone 2. But Home Alone 1, just a great movie all the way around. I mean, kids, Home Alone. Everyone, when you're young, wants to be Home Alone. Just a, a great movie, great tricks to fool these, uh, to fool the Wet Bandits. Here's Because they leave the sink running, that's why they're the Wet Bandits. Here's my Christmas movie fact. Okay. Not fact, opinion. A Christmas Story is Not a one fan. of the worst movies ever made. Yes. One of the Thank worst you. movies Thank you. ever made. And the fact that they play it for 24 hours straight TBS. is embarrassing. Yes. That movie is awful. Absolutely awful. awful. Everyone, awful every, everyone, everyone I've ever met, oh, that movie, oh, best Christmas movie ever. Movie is no good. Yes. Sorry, I'm not. Thank I will. You. I have. I will never watch that movie. A second I, I time. cannot watch it. TBS got to skip over on Chris from eight o'clock Christmas yep. Eve till eight o'clock Christmas night. Cannot Awful. watch TBS. Awful. Absolutely terrible. If you're a Christmas Story fan, I feel bad for you. Exactly. All right. So that's ten topics up, ten topics down. What What else do we have to say here? That's it. Not. That is not it. We got to say thanks to Milka. Yes. Milka Tolis. Thanks to Tom Lehman. Thanks to Shannon Carlson. Thanks to Sam Allen. Thanks to Ryan Eaton. And then it's also a very special day today. Did you know that? Uh, no, I didn't. A very special day. It is the warehouse's birthday. So what we got here on PTR <laughs> is a birthday <laughs> for the warehouse. Get these balloons out here. No, nope, do not. Keep the cameras rolling, Milka. Keep the cameras rolling. It, say, it says, happy birthday, Jared, from the folks at PTR. I appreciate it, everyone here. Keep that rolling. Don't, <laughs> not, not done yet. Yeah, get that balloon out here. Almost made it. Almost made it. By the way, this lighter not only matches my sweater, the only other time I used it was on Olympic PTR yep. torch. Yes, the torch that only one lady knew what that was when we were. Here we go. There's no wick on that. I don't know if All that right. thing's Yeah, just, just go onesies right now. Uh, we're not going to sing happy birthday, but g- give me a wish. Um, for another, another good semester of PTR. All right. All right. What do you got to say now? Tip your waiters. See you guys later.